Hello everyone, and welcome to my Wrath of the Lich King Shaman Guide. In this guide I'll be talking about the following things. The talent trees for each specialization, and the glyphs that I like to use. The new spells you will be able to use in Wrath of the Lich King, consumables and gems for each specialization, and some tips and tricks, for example the best race, but also profession for a shaman. But yeah, with all this being said, let's jump right into the talent tree. And the first talent tree I'll be covering is the one for Restoration Shaman. There's two different builds I like to use as a healer, one focusing on AoE healing, and one is going to focus more on single target healing. So in order to increase my AoE healing, I also need to make sure that I focus on the right glyphs. For example, Glyph of Chain Heal to heal an additional target, and Glyph of Earth Living Weapon to have a higher chance to apply this healing effect on people that I heal. When you combine these two things together, and together with the Glyph of Healing Stream Totem, then you do amazing AoE healing as a Shaman. And for that specific reason, these are the Glyphs that I like to use. If I'm mainly assigned to do single target healing, for example spam healing the main tank, then I'll be using these Glyphs. If you don't enjoy healing, then you might rather spec into Enhancement Shaman. This is such a fun specialization, with an option to do a high amount of melee damage, but also range damage at the same time. There's two different talent trees I like to use as an enhancement shaman. The first one here is mainly focused on when I'm leveling, but also when I lack mana. Once I start doing dungeons at level 80, but also when I've got better gear to manage my mana, then I would definitely swap into a talent tree like this. This will also make me able to do way more damage, but also more AoE damage. The glyphs that I use at max level will mainly be looking like this. Fire Nova, Storm Strike, and Flame Tongue Weapon. However, if you mainly prefer to do ranged DPS, then Enhancement Shaman is not the right choice for you. Instead, you should learn about the Elemental Shaman. Elemental Shamans will mainly be spamming a few abilities, for example Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightning, and Lava Burst. At the same time, you have amazing cooldowns you can blow to do a high amount of damage in next to no time. And don't worry, when we talk about AoE damage, an Elemental Shaman will also be doing just fine. Next up will be the new spells that you will get, no matter what specialization you choose. Shamans will be able to imbue their weapon with Earth Living Weapon. This will increase their healing by 195. You also have 20% chance to trigger Earth Living. When Earth Living Weapon triggers, you will place a healing over time on that target. Therefore, it's so efficient to spam Chain Heal as a healer. That way, you will apply these healing over time on your raid group. In this expansion, Shamans will now also be able to summon 4 totems at the same time, so you don't need to hit 4 individual keybinds or spells. You can also customize what kind of totems you will be casting, and there's going to be 3 different spells, so you can do 3 different customizations, and these you can change at any time. Now Shamans will also be getting a CC. This is going to be a Hex, a short cast time, where you will transform someone into a frog. On PvP targets, this will last for 10 seconds. On PvE targets, 30 seconds. The Hex target will be able to move even though it's Hexed, but it will not be able to attack. Do notice that Hex has a 45 seconds cooldown, so you will not be able to spam this CC. And it's also a curse, so mages and druids will for example be able to decurse this. Another spell that all shamans will get by default is Lava Burst. If you apply a Flame Shock to the target, then your Lava Burst will always be a critical hit. This spell is doing insane damage, even as a healer, so it's a great way for you to assist your group with killing a target. In Burning Crusade, shamans usually interrupt the targets with Earth Shock. In Wrath of the Lich King, this will change, and now we get a new spell, Wind Shear. Wind Shear will interrupt the target for 2 seconds, and it only has a 5 seconds cooldown. In this clip, I use a wind shear on the first polymorph. Then I move a bit, and I use my grounding totem on the next polymorph. And at the third polymorph, I simply wind shear once again. At the bottom of the restoration tree, you will find the new spell Riptide. An instant healing that also plays a heal over time on the target. This has a short cooldown, so you will be able to move and do some fairly decent healing at the same time. This becomes handy when you constantly have to be moving during a raid encounter. And when you combine Riptide and Earth Living Weapon, 
then you have a chance to have two healing over time on that target. Also make sure to use the chain heal after your riptide, because casting riptide will improve the healing of your next chain heal. At the bottom of the enhancement talent tree, you will find the talent spirit wolf, allowing the shaman to summon two spirit wolf for 45 seconds. The spirit wolf will be moving extremely fast, dashing and stunning the target, and whenever they do damage, they will also heal the shaman. A great way in case you're doing a raid encounter where you take a lot of damage. Use this cooldown to make sure that the healers don't have to prioritize you. Also great in PvP to make sure you don't die right away. Another new talent for the Enhancement Shaman is Maelstrom Weapon. Whenever you do damage, you have a chance to get one of these. And when you have got 5 stacks, you will be able to do your next spell instantly. For example, an instant heal, an instant lightning ball, or even an instant hex. One way I like to use this spell in a raid is for example if we are about to take a lot of damage. Then I stack up these and the moment I take the damage I instantly heal myself for a lot of healing. Last but not least we also have the new talent for elemental shamans. Thunderstorm will deal a high amount of damage to all targets within 12 yards. It will also restore 8% of your mana. The great thing or well the fun thing about this spell is that it also knocked people away 20 yards. But if they're close to an edge, I guess you can imagine what will happen. In this case, I shoot away the warrior and it ended up dying. Next up is the different gems and consumables I'll be using for the first couple of phases. I'll be starting with Resto Shaman, then Enhancement, followed by Elemental. For the Meta Gem, I'll be using this one to increase my mana pool, but also to have a chance to restore mana during the fight. Whenever I have to go for gems, I mainly focus on getting more spell power. More spell power is equal to bigger heals. And then I also go for haste to be able to cast the heals faster. For the consumables, I always use a flask of brushworm to increase my overall spell power. And then I like to combine these with runic mana potions to be able to restore mana during the fight. Regarding food buffs, then I usually stick to two different ones. Either the one that increase my haste rating up here or the one at the bottom, Fish Feast, that increase my spell power. In this expansion, there's only one metagem that I like to stick to as an enhancement shaman. It's the Relentless Earth Siege Diamond. For the other gems, you have so many different options, but here's just a few of them and what I mainly prefer to use in the first couple of phases. Also because you need to make sure you become hit and expertise kept. Once you've taken care of these two stats, then you can also start focusing on getting more haste and attack power. The flask that I use is Flask of Endless Rage to increase my overall attack power. And whenever I'm about to use my cooldowns, then I also use a potion of speed. By doing it like this, you will take advantage of having more haste but also more damage at the same time. For food buffs, there's two decent options. Either the fish feast to increase your attack power or the other one to increase your haste. In the beginning of Wrath of the Lich King, if you lack hit, then you could also go for a food buff that provides you hit. Last but not least, we have the Elemental Shaman, and for the meta gem, I use this one to increase my overall crit rating, but also the critical strike damage. For the other gems, you need to prioritize getting hit. We are talking about 17% hit with buffs. This is to make sure that you hit the targets, else it doesn't really matter how much spell damage or crit you have if you don't hit the targets. The flask that I use as an Elemental Shaman is this one, and just like Enhancement Shaman, when I blow my cooldowns, then I also like to use a potion of speed as the specialization. For the food buffs, I either use this one or the fish feast to increase my spell power. But if you still like hit, make sure to use a food buff that provides you hit rating. Next up is the stat priority for the different specializations. And as a resto shaman, you need to mainly focus on getting more spell power and haste. More spell power is equal to more powerful heals and haste equal to you throwing out these heals a lot faster. Another reason for haste being so good is because the faster you throw out your chain heal, the faster you will also be applying earth living weapon to the targets. As an enhancement shaman, there's two mandatory things to go for. It's expertise and hit. You will need a minimum of 8% hit, but you would like to aim for 17 in order to hit with all your spells. You also need to make sure that you get 26 expertise. As an elemental shaman, your main focus will also be to get hit kept. 
and when you have taken care of this, you can start focusing on getting more spell power, haste, and then crit. There's two professions that are always picked, and it's these two, Jewel Crafting and Engineering. Jewel Crafting will allow me to craft three epic gems, and these you can even craft in the early phases when there's no epic gems available to non jewel crafters. Another reason for dual crafting to be so amazing is because it allows me to focus on the exact stat I would like to benefit from. This is not the case with other professions in this expansion. The reason why I pick engineering is for the glyph enchant you will be able to do, hyperspeed accelerators. It increases your haste and this is beneficial for all the three specializations. Engineers will also benefit from other enchants, for example rocket boots on their boots and even a parachute on their cloak. So what is the best race as a shaman? Well, on the alliance side, it's pretty obvious, it's Draenei. This is also because Draenei is the only alliance class that will be able to play a shaman. On Horde, I have to stick with Orc, mainly because of Blood Fury, this increases your spell power and attack power. Beneficial for elemental, enhancement and restoration shaman. You also have more expertise in case you like to play enhancement shaman and some other stuff, for example, reduce stun effects. But yeah, that's also about it for this class guide. In case you would like to see other class guides for Wrath the Lich King, or maybe even other content for this expansion, then make sure to check out the channel. As always, thank you for watching, and have an amazing day. Peace.